remains in the purple tier as well as most of California. Data expert and analyst Justin Hart joins us now to share his thoughts on that colored tier system that we are still employing. Justin, long time no chat. Paul, great to be with you this morning. Hey, let's get the disclaimer out of the way right away because I always, whenever we have you on, the he's not a doctor, he's not a virologist, and your response is? Look, I'm not, but I'm a darn good data guy. And I wouldn't insert myself into someone's domain, but they insert themselves into my life, my kids' education, my church, my business. So uh, you'll forgive me if I have a voice in this. All right. From that, so let's get to that voice. Uh, we saw, you know, let's, uh, I'm throwing just a little bit of a curveball at you, Justin, because uh, of Governor Newsom's tweet in response to Greg Abbott saying, uh, his decision to open up Texas and the, our governor said absolutely reckless. I want you to respond to that tweet and the fact that we're still in a tier system when the rest of the country seems to be moving on. Look, it's a, it's first a sad hypocrisy considering what we know uh, Governor Newsom did up in several places now uh, without a mask. Uh, we also know that looking at uh, states that are nearby and states in Florida, I'll just give you a couple states that basically have had no mask mandates and we're at the exact same case rate. That's the unfortunate thing. I think if we felt that these, and we saw that the data was implemented, that if this was actually having an impact, we'd all go along with it just fine. I know I would. But when I look at the data and the results, and I realize that these sacrifices may have been for nothing, and in fact, the impact may have been dramatic and drastic, especially the more stringent lockdown measures of closing businesses uh, and shuttering uh, large gatherings, I think that we will ha we'll have to look back on this in a, in a sour distaste. The unfortunate thing about Governor Newsom's comment to Governor Abbott is that it means we're going to be locked up and masked up for six months to a year now. He's got to save face if he turns around a month from now and say, oh, you can take off your masks. Uh, he, he wouldn't do that. So this is unfortunate. Uh, he, geez, he keeps playing politics with this. We need to look at the data and move on. Well, if we could throw that graphic right back up again, please. Uh, I guess the conclusion is, whether we had a lot of mass mandates or not, we all ended up in the exact same place, pretty much. That's right. You look at Georgia, you look at Florida, two states without mask mandates for over six months. You look at Texas, which just got rid of this mask mandate, and you look at California. And we are all, all of us, within 9% of each other, right about 90,000 cases per 100,000 people in population. So when you adjust for population, you, we all ended up at the same place anyways. In fact, within a week or so, California, who has the highest death count right now of COVID, will surpass Florida as far as population-adjusted deaths from COVID. And that's a really unfortunate thing that we have sacrificed so much, and these lockdowns basically uh, put us in the same place with places which had no lockdowns. Uh, when you try to protect everybody, you end up protecting no one. Justin, uh, I, when we first came across your name, you had about 11,000 followers on Twitter. That Now you're approaching 100,000, Justin underscore Hart. I, I found this item on your Twitter account that I wish you could explain in greater detail to me. And if we could throw up the next slide. Y your reference was if we counted COVID deaths the same way we counted flu deaths, we would have less of them. Or am I paraphrasing that correctly? Well, I think the, the more important thing is when you qualify the types of death that we can count, right? Uh, when you look at people that have been hospitalized, people which we have an actual positive test date back from, and people uh, where we have an illness onset date, those are the three things that they look at uh, in an epidemiological curve. So when they're counting, for example, influenza deaths, that's the way they count them. Uh, if we were to count them that way, uh, last year we would have seen 136,000 deaths from COVID. The other deaths that we have, we have no record of a hospitalization, no record of an actual date of a test. Uh, there's a lot of probabilities in there. Look, our data has been abysmal across the country. Uh, and that's something we're going to have to rectify if we're going to catch what will be the big pandemic. This is not the big pandemic, folks. And so uh, it's unfortunate that we sort of wasted so much time and energy uh, and uh, a lot of fear and fear mongering to keep people from a, uh, a very difficult, challenging disease, but one that was very predictable. Uh, and when we look back at uh, really organizing what the deaths were counted, we're gonna have to do some assessments as to what really transpired.
So is the converse true then? If we counted flu deaths the way we count COVID deaths, there would be more of them? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we've included so many uh, deaths within COVID. We had the chance to look at 700 death certificates in Florida, the actual death certificates. And we found out of all of those, 40% of them should never have been qualified as COVID deaths. They included people falling from ladders and people who had uh, been in nursing homes with do not resuscitate instructions. These are people that unfortunately were on their last legs already. Now we want to save and enjoy the great years. My parents are elderly. I encourage them to get the vaccine. Uh, but at the same time, we need to recognize that their risk for anyone under 50 is practically zero. And for anyone under 65, it's very small. And, and those are things that you do not hear from our elected officials. And so we are constantly under the threat of fear, which exacerbates uh, the issues that we have in lockdowns. Uh, I'll give one example. Because of our children being out of school, 215,000 cases of alleged abuse were not caught just in March of April of last year because those are typically caught by who? By teachers. Uh, and, then, and just lastly, you, you talk about transparency, or I think you were going in the direction of transparency. I think that is the biggest beef a lot of folks have is we don't know how things are being calculated, like the number of seven per 100,000. That seems... Is that just pulled out of the air? Who, why, why is it not? Why is it seven per one hundred thousand to get into the red tier, and not one hundred and seventy or some other number? They won't share the details behind that, and that's the really unfortunate thing. I think they basically throw a dart. Uh, I'm not sure how they come to those calculations because even a slight one percent error, and we know that these tests are extremely prone to error. They can catch a COVID disease at five days or at seventy-five days. And so literally with the false positives that you will get off of these PCR tests, we will be in this tier or these tiers for a very long time. We will never make it to the top tier, never, ever, unless they drop these tier color codings. Well, on that optimistic note, I'll just compliment you on your haircut <laughs> and we'll call, we'll call it a conversation. Go get your haircut. The barbershops have got to be open. Let's get them open. <laughs> All right. Justin Hart, everybody. You can follow him on Twitter at Justin underscore.